Hi, this is Pat. I'm a web developer based in Washington, D.C. I've been teaching programming for over six years now, and one of my favorite questions that I get from learners and one of my favorites to answer is, do I have what it takes to become a programmer? Part of the reason that I love this question is that I've asked it of myself over the years so many times as I've been teaching myself to code. And you're in for a treat because I've gathered up the three things that I feel make an effective programmer. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, this is a big topic. I don't think there's enough time in the world to cover all the things that make an effective programmer. Instead, these are the three things that I wish new learners understood when they were thinking about a new career in web development or programming, or if they're just confused and don't know where to start. If you're watching this, you just might be a programmer, so let's dive in. What makes an effective programmer? Well, in my opinion, there are three things that I wish someone had told me. The first is programming is about how much you code. Now, it, it is true that programming is about coding, but if you put too much emphasis on how much you code, I found that you actually run into some problems. What I mean by that is that there's a typical programming career trajectory. When you're first hired as a junior developer to become a mid-level developer or even a senior developer, your, you know, your career can take a couple different paths. But I found that when you're just starting out as a junior level developer, you're doing a lot of contribution. You're, you're fixing bugs, you're committing tickets, you're doing pull requests, uh, you know, all the things that you know, junior developers do in, in volume. And if you get good at that, you end up as more of a mid-level manager. Uh, maybe you're a mid-level developer, uh, depends on, you know, what company you work at. But I found that the, the more you understand about how the technology of the company works, the more you need to be involved in the decision making about what technologies should be worked on. And then if you get really good at that, you become a senior level developer or even a technical architect. And you're making decisions about how to make things run more effectively and efficiently. And you end up actually deleting more code than you contribute. Now, this, this bell curve here does not mean that you don't code throughout your career. Um, and all the senior level developers that I know, they, they still make contributions, but they, they end up deleting more code, uh, than they, than they write. So, so what that means is, is that, um, for us, being deliberate and being thoughtful and being strategic is is what web development is is really about, what programming is is really about at the end of the day. And and to illustrate this, I have a quick story. So, I was working at a company, and their their code bases were a little bit antiquated. They needed to be refactored, but they were still more of a startup. And so I was, you know, I was brought on as what I assumed was uh, was a React developer, and it turned out that. I wasn't going to be doing any React at all. It wasn't time to refactor the front ends in, in React. And I was kind of mulling that over because, you know, as a startup, you, you assume that they're on the latest and greatest technologies uh, and they would, of course, they would have a React front end. But I learned that uh, over the amount of time that it would take to refactor all of our code bases into React, we actually wouldn't be solving any of the business problems that the company was facing. We, we would have helped no one in the company make any more money, do their jobs better. Also, we could say that the code base was in React. Um, we would have written a tremendous amount of code, but we wouldn't have made anybody's lives any easier. And we certainly would have been serving any of our customers any better. So to wrap that up, programming is really about how smartly you code. It's, it's about how you use your time and where you make design decisions, meeting programming decisions, and overall, what, what lines of code do you write? Um, and what, how does that impact the business specifically? So that was the first reality that I had to come to terms with. The second is programming is about how much you know. Now, it is true that there is a base level of information you need to have to become an effective programmer, but the emphasis is not how about how much you know. The truth is, is that it's about uh, the reality of working in our industry is there's so much to know. Uh, you probably feel this yourself. It seems like there's just so many technologies out there that you just need to understand to have a base level uh, just to keep up, just to keep pace. Uh, and the reality of being a programmer in today's economy is that we have changing industries. You know, if you think about all of the businesses that, that we support, their, their whole idea is to beat their competition. They want to be the best at what they do. And so that means innovation. That means trying new things. 
that also means driving the web in a way that means that we're constantly updating our technologies. We're constantly updating our industries. We have to keep up with an ever-changing landscape, and that means that there's there's too much to learn. There's no way that we can actually know it all. In fact, being a, an effective web developer, being an effective programmer is about how well you learn. Uh, knowing that there's going to be something new around the corner all the time, somebody's going to solve a new problem and you're going to have to add it to your tech stack. None of this is really going to be static. So you can you can shave off all of that anxiety knowing that there's no way you can know it all, that, that you're just going to have to adapt and, and you're just going to have to learn as you go. And so to give you a story with this, I had a, a senior developer friend of mine named Jesse, who I lovingly call my surfer senior developer. He's a really cool guy. I got a lot of swagger. And I came to him with a problem that I had been working on for about a week. And I was so, so frustrated. I had, I had tried everything that I could think of and I'd spent so much time on it. And he just fixed it in a matter of seconds. And it was really demoralizing and humiliating because, you know, I thought that I had come so far, but it seemed like I had just had so much further to go. And I asked Jesse, I said, hey, Jesse, um, you know, does this, does this ever really get any easier? Like the more you know, and he just kind of laughed and said, no, no, it doesn't. Because the reality is, is that the better you get as a programmer, the more challenging work you work on. Uh, the more there is, you have to, to start to learn and understand and implement. And if you get good enough, you're actually going to be working on things that either nobody at your company has ever done and you can't ask for help. There might not be any documentation online for you to look up. Or you might be the first person solving that problem at all. So becoming a really effective programmer is about really how well you learn and how well can you adapt to the situations as you're thrust in. So that's number two. And the last one here, probably my favorite, uh, especially because I don't come from a tech background. Uh, programming is for those who don't like working with people. I think that, that programming tends to be attractive towards more introverted behavior types, um, those that, that think that working with people is, is tough and it's messy, and it really is. Unfortunately, programming, uh, if you don't like working with people, programming is not going to be the magic solution for you. And what I mean by that is that programming is still customer service. Uh, it's still working with people. It's still solving their problems and, and interfacing with them. Your, your clients, your coworkers, your bosses, uh, your stakeholders, these are, these are all of your customers. Uh, whether you, whether you believe it or not. And what kind of unites them all is that they all have differing levels of technical understanding and ability. And, and some of them will have absolutely none. Uh, and others will have more, more than you do. And so, you know, today we work on applications which are so large that we have to work in teams. That we can't solve these problems on our own anymore, at least not in a timeline that makes sense. And so, so while no one will be against you outright, they might not understand where you're coming from. You might have to sell them on the decisions that you made or, or help them understand why the, the feature that they're asking for is going to take too long or why you can't even solve it the way, the way that you want. Uh, so programming is really about customer service at the end of the day. An effective programmer is the one that writes code that gets deployed, that gets shipped. And if you can't get the people to sign off on what you're doing, then you might not as well have written that code at all. Uh, the, the last story to punctuate this uh, is I was working with a design firm and they were, they were building us a bunch of emails but they were they were giving us uh, email designs based on an understanding uh, of the web and not emails and and so the worst practices that we've strayed away from and moved on from are the only ways to do HTML emails and so I had to kind of get on their level and understand where they were coming from and then help them see what limitations that that I was working with so that I wouldn't be pulling my hair out whenever they sent me designs. Uh, because it, it's no fun for anyone if you if you're working and and you're not on the same page. And so they they were coming from a background of graphic design. They didn't have any technical understanding. So getting us all on the same page here was was really really helpful.
So the last part here is to wrap this up is an effective programmer is about how smartly you program the decisions that you make and where you put the code. It's about how well you learn, how well you can step into new problems and solve them and, and help your team. And it's also about customer service and getting the right people on your side to, to be able to, to sign off on the, all the work that you do so that you even can commit and ship the code. Okay, so if you've made it this far, you're probably ready for some next steps. We'll be adding all kinds of new videos and resources on this channel, so like and subscribe so you can stay up to date. But if you have a question that I didn't answer or that you'd like me to, leave a question or comment below because I love responding to learners' comments. And if you're an experienced programmer, feel free to chime in. We're a stronger community the more that we help each other. But if you're ready to take the next step in your career and learn some programming, head on over to Code Academy. We spend a lot of time making videos and learning paths for people just like you to kick off their careers in programming. The best day to start is today.